Welcome to Torah Portion Re'e. My name is Peter, and this is my son, Kellen, who's wearing shorts because it's been a very hot day and because shorts have another purpose. Pretty sure it's good. Yeah. Our goal is to encourage you to read Torah in Hebrew, just like we did. And we like to approach this like decoding, and that's why we use the DNA molecule. We want you to learn how to decode the Hebrew so that you can read it. Read all the way through and enjoy it. Like, read. If you've been with us all this time, you might consider getting the BHS tagged. It is expensive but it's great for showing how the verbs are conjugated and memorized. 
If you're seeing our video for the first time, go back to the beginning and watch how to read Hebrew and then Bereshit. These are all on the video page of TorahAndMyHeart.com. The last two weeks we've shown you that one and a half minute video that Kel and I made about the breaking the cuffs. This is an even shorter version of that same video, the importance of Torah. Our family had been handcuffed by church and we weren't supposed to believe what the Bible says. I knew that breaking these cuffs would be painful. Breaking the cuffs was painful. But then we found that people all over the world are doing the same. Are you ready to break your cuffs? We're using this picture again of the overheated head because we know that's what happens. And especially in your first two years, it's okay. That means you're studying hard. If that's happening with you, if you're doing 10 to 20 hours a week, that's how you're going to learn to read Torah in Hebrew. And we've been there. We understand. Stick with it and you'll get it. You'll be reading Torah in Hebrew. Now we're going to look first here at chapter 13 of Deuteronomy. The reason we're doing that is because when I was in Bible college, my wife and I met in Bible college, and we learned that the definition of a false prophet was in Deuteronomy 18, and it is. If the prophet says something's going to happen, and it does, he's a prophet of God. If it doesn't happen, he's not a prophet of God. But what we're going to read in Deuteronomy 13 is what we missed you know, having learned that in Bible college, having learned that definition, hey, the definition of a false prophet is in Deuteronomy 18, then every time I read Torah after that, I missed chapter 13 because I hadn't been told that was also a definition of a false prophet. And here it goes a little bit further. It says, if the thing happens, what the dreamer of dreams or the prophet said happens, and then he says, let's serve another God, follow other commandments, that's a false prophet. את כל הדבר אשר אנוכי מצווה אתכם אותו, תשמרו לעשות, לא תוסף עליו ולא תגרע ממנו. So when you're decoding Hebrew, that et is a big help. Et kol hadavar. So the direct object is the all the word, which I command you, etchem, that's another et right there. But then the oto is masculine. That vav on the end, the o, that's masculine. And can you figure out why that's masculine? It's because davar is a masculine noun. And that also helps when decoding. When you see masculine markers, you know it's talking about a masculine noun. You see feminine markers talking about a feminine noun. And then also the singular and plural also helps. So the oto is again referring to all the word which I command you uh, to do, uh, to guard and to do. Do not add to it and do not take away from it. This sounds like a verse in Revelation. Whoever adds to the words of this book, whoever takes away, also, in Hebrew, this is verse 1 of chapter 13, but in English, it's the last verse of chapter 12. So the numbering in your English Bibles is different than the Hebrew. All the word which I command you, you shall guard to do it, and you shall not add to it, nor shall you diminish from it. Ki yakum bekirbecha navi o cholem chalom venatan elecha ot o mofet. I've got mofet highlighted there, and let's jump to that right now. Uh, mofet means a sign or a wonder, and it's in orange there at the last word, mofet. It's number 4159, but it comes from 3302 which is Yaffa, and that's where we get beautiful. And you see in the definition for 4159, it says, in the sense of conspicuousness, Yakum, if he stands in your midst, Kerev is midst and prefix bait in, uh, Kaf suffix in your midst, talking to second person masculine singular, prophet, Navi o Cholem Chalom, 
and that's a dreamer of a dream. So cholem is a participle, a verb used as an adjective. So somebody who's dreaming a dream, and we're going to see that expression a few more times in this chapter, cholem, chalom. And he gives, Natan, to you a sign or a wonder. For if there arises in your midst a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives to you a sign or a wonder. Uva haot veha mopet asher diber elecha, lemor nelecha achare elohim acherim asher lo yedatam vena avdem. Uva haot veha mopet. So, and it comes, the sign or the wonder which he spoke to you, asher deber elecha, which he spoke to you, still talking second person, masculine singular. And this will be important later. This will be a clue to something at the end of this verse. Saying, lemor, nelcha, the root halach, we will walk. Achre, the first occurrence there in red, is a preposition. We will walk after. Elohim acherim. Acherim is an adjective describing gods, other gods. So it's the same root, achar, but it's used differently here in orange. Asher lo yada atam vena avdeim. And remember, he's talking second person masculine singular. One way you know is because it's lo yada atam, ta, and that's that same elacha, that a, ah, that's that second person masculine singular. And then what's the maim there that makes it look plural? The maim is referring to the other gods. And so other gods that you do not know. You do not know them, in other words. And we will serve them. That maim suffix again is serve them. And the noon, they na, we, avdeim, avad is to serve. So we do not, uh, you do not know them and we will serve them. So that's kind of tricky there, but that's how that works. And it comes to pass the sign and the wonder which he has spoken to you, and he says, let us walk after other gods which you do not know and serve them. Lo tishma el divre hanavi hahu, o el cholem hachalom hahu. And you shall not listen. Lo tishma. Shema, listen, obey. You shall not listen to the words. Divre hanavi. Masculine plural construct chain. Divre Hanavi, the words of the prophet, Hahu, him, or to the Cholem Hachalom, that uh, participle we talked about earlier, the dreamer of dreams, Hahu, him. Ki uh, menase. I've got that here on the side. That's a participle, nasa, to test or try, and it's PL, active intensive. So God is the one who is testing you. Ki minase Adonai Elohechem etchem. The Lord your God is testing you. Ladaat, to know, ha yishchem. Ha yishchem has the prefix ha with the petach and shva vowels that line and the two dots. So that makes it an interrogative hey. It's asking a question. Hashem is testing you to know, is there the love of Hashem your God? Ohavim. Now the way the Young's literal does that is to know whether ye are loving. Because participle is usually loving. It usually has an ing or often does. Whether ye are loving Hashem your God. Yesh 
of Hayashchem. The first time that's ever used is Abraham is talking to Hashem and the angels, and he asks, if there are 50 righteous people in Sodom, would you destroy it? Hayesh Chamishim is the way that is. Usually you don't see is in Hebrew. Present form of verbs to be. Usually don't see them in either biblical or modern Hebrew. But this is a form that you sometimes see. Yesh. He is testing you, Hashem your God, to know whether ye are loving at the object of your loving. Hashem your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And you shall not listen to the words of the prophet or to the dreamers of dreams, for he is testing you, Hashem your God, to know whether you would love Hashem your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Achare Adonai Elhechem Telechu Veoto Tirau Veet Mitzvotav Tishmoru Uvkolo tishmau veoto ta avodu uvo tid bakun. What I've done here is I've, I've highlighted the tav prefixes and the vav suffixes. And the tav means it's talking to you, and the vav suffix means it's you plural. So he's saying, achare, uh, and there's that achar we had earlier, after Hashem your God telechu halach is the root you shall walk you plural shall walk after Hashem your God and him the oto so there's the pointer of the direct object whom shall you fear, which is the next word fear him et uh, o or ve oto, you shall fear him tira you shall fear the et mitzvotav and his commandments. Tish moru you shall guard. Uve kolo tish ma'u and his voice you shall listen. Ve oto ta avodu and him shall you serve. And in him or with him. Tid bakun, you shall cleave to him or with him. Then after that final vav suffix is a final noon, and that's a pedagogic noon, in, uh, intensive, makes it intensive. You shall really cleave to him. And after Hashem your God, you shall walk, in him you shall fear, and his commandments you shall guard, and to his voice you shall listen, and him you shall serve, and to him you shall certainly cling. Veha navi haku o cholem hachalom haku yumat ki diber sara al adona el hechem ha moti et hem me eret mit rhem veha podha mi bet avadim lehadi haha min haderech asher tsivha. Adonai Elohecha lalechet bach uvi arta hara mikir becha. Good, good job, Kelly. That's uh, that's a tough verse. It's a long one too. And the prophet, he or the dreamer of dreams, him, uh, he shall die. You mat, he shall die. For he spoke Sarah, and Sarah there is a rebellion. It's a noun based on the root Sarar. He spoke rebellion toward uh, or with Hashem your God. Then Hamotzi et Chem me'eretz Mitzrayim, an orange there. Now, the ESV translates that who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and Young's literal says, who is bringing you out of the land of Egypt? You see, it's a he fill participle. The he prefix on hamotzi means causative, he fill, who caused you to yatsa, come out. And the maim makes it the participle. So hamotzi, causing you to come out, or could say the one who is bringing you out from the land of Egypt. 
But if you think about the fact that it literally is who is bringing you out of Egypt, that's kind of cool because remember, even after they left Egypt, it was like Egypt was still in them. They were still slaves. And so it's a process. Although coming out of Egypt happened once for them, it was also a process where they had to continually come out of Egypt and, or you could say get e Egypt out of them. And it's really the same way with us. It's getting the paganism, the world, out of us. That's the process of sanctification where we become ever more uh, devoted to Hashem and His kingdom. It's that process where we more and more want God's will to be done on earth, in our hearts, our lives. And that's a kind of an ongoing process of leaving Egypt. And there it is, the one who is bringing you out of the land of Egypt. Ve hapodcha, and who redeemed you from the house of slavery, mi beit avadim, le hadichacha, nadach. That's a root that's only used here in Torah in the book of Deuteronomy. And this is, I think, the third occurrence or second occurrence of that word in Deuteronomy. From the way, min haderech asher tziva Adonai elohecha la lechet, to walk. Halach, the root there. Bah, u vi artahara mikirbecha, and burn the evil from your midst. And the prophet or the dreamer of dreams, he must die. For he spoke in falsehood against Hashem your God, who is bringing you from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way which Hashem your God commanded you to walk in. And you will burn the evil from your midst. Kim yesitcha achecha ven Imecha o vincha o vitecha o eshet hekecha o reacha asher kenafshecha vaseter lemor nelecha vena avda elohim acherim asher lo yadata ata va avotecha. Ki yasitcha. I've got the root down there, suit, of underlying mislead. And the reason for that is I'm going to show you a picture here in a second. When I bought a nice suit about 22 years ago, I bought a Brooks Brothers. It was kind of an expensive suit, and I had a purpose for it, a business purpose for wearing it. Brooks Brothers has a reputation of being the suit of bankers and CPAs and attorneys, and it lends a subliminal message that you can trust this person. Now, that may not be true. It, you might not be able to trust that person at all. But that Brooks Brothers suit lends that air. And here's a picture of a guy wearing a Brooks Brothers suit. Now, this guy may be a total cad, but if you're conditioned to the Brooks Brothers look, you may just assume that he's a responsible, trustworthy person. And that is a really good way of remembering what suit means to mislead. And I, of course, I wonder if that isn't the actual origin of suit, our modern word coming from the Hebrew to mislead. I looked it up etymology dictionary and it just goes to like lawsuit and the idea of court and there's, there's other meanings. Uh, but I still, of course, suspect it comes from the Hebrew to mislead. And regardless, whether or not it really comes from that, it's a very good way to memorize that root to mislead. Achicha, ven imecha, your, the brother, the son of your mother, your brother, o vincha, or your son, o vitacha. And if we got vitacha, your daughter, in orange, because we're going to touch on that in the next verse. O eshet chekacha. That literally means the wife of your bosom, that, that, that woman that you really love, that, that wife of yours whom you love, who's close to you, part of your heart. O re'acha asher kenafshecha, or your neighbor who's like your soul. You have a soul, what do they call that? Um, soul brother, best friend, yeah. You know, that really close friend, 
even that person. Baseter uh, lemor in secret says, "Let's walk and serve, and we will serve other gods." Asher lo yadata ata faavotecha, which you have not known or your fathers. For if he misleads you, your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife whom you love, or your neighbor who is as your soul, and in secret he says, Let us walk, and we will serve other gods, which you did not know, nor did your fathers. Me'elohe ha'amim asher sevivotechem ha'krovim elecha o ha Har chokim mimecha mikze haaretz vead ketze haaretz. The prefix meim is from me elohe haamim, from the gods of the peoples, which savav is to surround. So sevivo te chem, the your surroundings chem second masculine and plural. The uh, your surround the gods from the peoples which surround you, whether near or far, hakrovim elecha, and I've got that in blue, which it means close to you, and it's interesting because that's why we say it today. Uh, you know, close to you, el is to ha you, o harchokim mimecha, or far from you, the name. Prefix there uh, means from, so mim mimecha, mikze haaretz vead kze haaretz. So you could say like from one end of the earth to the other. Uh, could be kze could be extremity, from one extremity of the earth to the other extremity of the earth. From the gods of the peoples which are around about you whether close to you or far from you, and from one end of the land to the other. Remember when I highlighted your daughter in a previous verse? This is a book by Stan Telchin, Betrayed. He's a Messianic believer in Yeshua, Jewish believer in Yeshua. And this is the story of how his daughter became a follower of Jesus, and he felt betrayed. In the Jewish mind, Jesus is a false god, and the church has done a wonderful job of selling that concept. And what I mean by that, and I hate to say that, but it's true, two major things. One, Jews tend to think that all Christians are Catholics. Now, of course, not all Christians are Catholics, but most Christians do follow Sunday as the Sabbath, which was a Catholic invention, and the Christmas, Easter, Halloween, those were Catholic inventions which most Christians follow. So there is some logic for why they think that. But the Catholics especially, they have the graven images, and we've already had that. Uh, actually, we're going to have that later in this passage about graven images. And it's all part and parcel of following other gods, because that's how most other nations serve their gods, is with graven images. So when a Jewish person thinks of a relative believing in Jesus, they're thinking false god, idol worship, different commandments, graven images, Deuteronomy 13, boom. And here it happened to him. It was his daughter, just like we read in the previous verse, but yet he investigated and became a believer in Yeshua himself. Lo tove lo, velo tishma elav, velo tachos enecha alav, velo Remember earlier I had the tav prefix and the vav suffix highlighted in red because that meant second person masculine plural. Here without the vav suffix, it's second person masculine singular. So don't tove. And tove there is um, to be willing so don't give consent, don't go along with. Lo 
low is uh, with him. So it's it's a homophone with low, don't, and low to him. So don't consent to him. <laughs> Even though it's low, low, it means different things, spelled differently. And velo, and don't listen to him, and don't uh, have pity. Tachos en ha. Don't let your eye pity him uh, or have pity on him. And lo tachmol. Don't spare him. And don't tehase. Don't cover for him. Um, don't give a covering for him. And you shall not l yield to him. You shall not listen unto him. And you shall not look with compassion on him. And you shall not spare him. And you shall not cover him or hide him. Ki harog, harog tahar genu yadecha tihye bo varishona laha mito veyad kol haam baacharona. For you shall certainly kill him. Now I've got the new suffix. <laughs> I just remember what is that called? I've got the new suffix there highlighted in red because it it means him. When you see the noon with the dagesh and the vav with the dagesh, it's it's him. So and the repeating of the root harag to kill uh, means you shall certainly kill him. Uh, Yad ha. Now there's yad, and then ha. Your hand, tihiye. Why the prefix tav? The prefix tav for tihiye, which is, it shall be. It's really literally she shall be because yad is a feminine noun. Tihiye bo, ve rishona. Your hand shall be against him first. Lahamito to kill him, and the hand of all the people, pa'acharona. The achar root again there means afterward, and then na is the single feminine suffix referring back to the hand. So the hand of all the people will come afterward. For you must certainly kill him, and your hand shall be the first to put him to death. And the hand of all the people following afterwards. Us kalto va avanim va met ki vikesh lahadi haha me al aduna el haha hamotziaha me eret mitraim mi bet avadin. Sakal is a root meaning to kill with stones. Uh, Evan is a stone until he's dead, va met, and he, and he dies. For he sought. Bakash is to seek. Uh, he sought vikesh lehadichacha, and there's the third use of nadach in Torah, the second in this passage we've been reading. Me'al Adonai Elohecha, to drive you from upon Hashem your God. Hamotzi acha, and like we said earlier, that could be who is bringing you from the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. And you shall pelt him with stones, and he shall die, for he sought to entice you from Hashem your God, who is bringing you from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. V'chol Yisrael yishmu'u v'yira'un v'lo yosifu la'asot kadavar hara hazeh b'kirbecha. And all of Israel shall hear Yishmeun, um, Yod prefix, Vav suffix, plural. They shall all hear, and they shall all fear. And then the noon, paragogic noon there, they shall all, yeah, I guess if someone proposed serving other gods and his father or his best friend or the the husband killed that person. Yeah, they would all fear. And ve lo yosifu la asot kadavar hara. 
and it won't happen again, this evil thing uh, in your midst, bekirbecha, be in your midst. And all of Israel shall hear it and be afraid, and not again shall such an evil thing be done in your midst. Now we're going to talk about follow the money. If you've heard the expression follow the money, you know it means you can find a motive by seeing who profits financially. And here are two verses from our Torah portion which make you seriously wonder about the motivation for replacement theology. Ve'natata ha'kesef bechol asher te'ave nafshecha babakar uvatzon uvayayan uvashechar uvechol asher tish'alcha nafshecha ve'achalta sham lifnei Adonai elohecha ve'samachta Atta uvetecha. Now this is in the context of the three tithes which are discussed in Numbers and then recapped here. There's the tithe for the Levite, the tithe for the poor, and the tithe to go party in Jerusalem. And this verse here says, if you live pretty far from Jerusalem, too far to take your herds and your wine and all that, then sell it for cash. This is your tithe. Sell it for cash in your town bundle up the cash in your clothing, go to Jerusalem, and he says, and give the money for all which your soul desires. Now there the tav prefix is feminine because nefesh is a feminine noun. So all that your soul desires. And that ava there means to desire. It's a verb, pl, intensive, active. The first time the noun from that root is used is in Genesis 3 6 when God made all the delightful trees is in verse 5 and then in verse 6 Eve saw that the fruit of the forbidden tree was a delight to the eyes ki ta'ava hu la enayin so whatever your soul desires among the herd among the flock and of wine and of strong drink and of all which tav prefix she should ask, and that's the nefesh again, nafshecha, all that she should ask of you, your soul, and you shall eat there before Hashem your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your house. So now <laughs> I looked up some commentaries on this, and it was interesting. Matthew Henry skipped this verse. And he actually said when talking about going to Jerusalem and he said we can celebrate with all sobriety and temperance. Well, yeah, wine and strong drink, that's not temperance. But, you know, that's his culture. That's where he's speaking from, like, I think 300 years ago, Matthew Henry. Then a more modern commentary was talking about Okay, we now no longer serve the Levites, but we serve uh, Melchizedek, as Hebrews says, um, Yeshua is not of the tribe of Levi, but Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek when he came back from fighting the kings. And so um, since Levi was in the loins of Abraham when he paid the tithe to Melchizedek, then all the Levitical tithes were basically going to Melchizedek anyway, and we give tithes to Melchizedek, which is Yeshua, which is the church. And then as far as the tithe for the poor, you know, that's covered, you could say, either through giving to the church or through taxes. And then the, um, the tithe to party in Jerusalem, he said that's for camp meetings. That was interesting, you know, and, and it makes sense. But have you ever... <laughs> seen a tithe to party in Jerusalem before, and that's really what this verse is saying. Then the next one, but can you see how replacement theology would say, don't give money to the Levites or Israel or Jerusalem anymore, but give it to us because we are the church and we have replaced Israel, so give your money to us. And of course, trillions of dollars since then, you know, last 1,700 years, imagine a lot of money has gone Based on that, 
And then Deuteronomy 15, verse 6, Ki Hashem, your God, oh, let me read in Hebrew first, Ki Adonai Elohecha Berachecha Ka'asher Diber Lach Ve'ha'avatata Goyim Rabim Ve'ata Lo Ta'avot U Mashalta Bagoyim Rabim Uvecha Lo Yim Sholu now, this is interesting because this first root we're going to look at, avat, that means to take or give a pledge. It can mean either one. So what depends is the context. For Hashem, your God, has blessed you as he said to you, ka'asher diber lach, ve ha'avatata, so there's, uh, causative, you shall lend, goyim rabim, you shall lend to many nations. And the reason you know that you shall lend is because it's just said, Hashem has blessed you as he said. So we know it's not borrowing. And that's really the only way I know to tell that means lend is just by context. You're blessed, so you'll lend. And then it says, ve'ata lo ta'avot. And you shall not borrow. Again, by context, because you've been blessed. That's how you know what that means. Umashalta begoyim rabim. And you shall rule over many nations. Uvecha, and over you, lo yim sholu. They shall not rule. Again, um, now there it's more clear. They shall not rule over you. And that would be another indication about what the avat means, the you shall lend and you shall not borrow. You shall rule and you not shall not be ruled over because of blessing. In replacement theology, which 1,800 years ago, quote-unquote church fathers were saying, the Israelites have now, because they've rejected Yeshua, the Israelites now inherit only the curses of Torah, whereas the church inherits the blessings. And I've got these quotes. If you go to my website, torahinmyheart.com, and you go to the treasures page, and then all the way at the bottom is a link to an article. Horrible quotes. Uh, you can't even believe they were said, but that's replacement theology. And you can see how, okay, we've replaced Israel, so now we get to rule over you. And we get to rule over the Jew. And there you have 1,700 years of church history, and about 1,000 of it was pretty bad. The evil eye is something where somebody glares at you or hates you, and it can bring you evil. So here's something called a chamsa, and it's a emblem, an amulet. It's got a hand with an eye in it usually, meaning kind of like you put up your hand and you stop the evil eye. Kellen, have you seen the chamsa in Jerusalem? Yes, definitely. Everywhere, gift shops everywhere you see this chamsa. So I guess there's a Kabbalah origin for it, whatever. I don't like it. And I will give you an example of something you can go to rather than this symbol to ward off the evil eye. But first off, we're going to talk about what the evil eye really means in another verse from our Torah portion, 15, verse 9. Hishamer lecha pen ihie davar im levavcha velia al Limor karva shanat hasheva shanat hashmita ve ra'a enacha be achicha ha evion ve lo titen lo ve kara alecha el adonai ve haya vecha chet. This is in the context of it's discussing the uh, moed the appointed times, and one of them is the seventh year, which is the year of Shemitah, the year of release, when debts are given up. And you might think, hmm, I don't want to loan money to my neighbor because it's the sixth year, and no matter what I loan to him in the seventh year, I have to let that debt go, so I'm not going to loan to him. In other words, you're stingy. Okay, so that's what this is saying. Here's the verse. He shall matter, cause to guard. Be careful for yourself, lest ye there shall be a word in your heart, im levavcha, veli al. That's worthless, a worthless 
word or deed in your heart, saying, Korava Shanat Hasheva. The seventh year is close. Shanat Hashmita, the year of release. Ve Ra'ah Encha, and your eye be evil. Be Achecha, against your brother, the poor one, Ha'evion. And you don't give to him. And he calls out against you to Hashem, ve haya vecha chet, and it shall be for you a sin. So that's what the evil eye really is. It's stinginess. That's the 4,000-year-old meaning of it, and these newer meanings are kind of goofy. And the main point here is to remember Proverbs 26, verse 2. Well, the main point is don't be stingy. And then a second point is Proverbs 26, 2. You want to ward off a curse? Obey God. Then, like uh, like the fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. Now, Kellen and I are sitting in our backyard, and one thing we love, I think they're gone now, they've had their babies and they've flown away, but the, the s we have swallows here, and they are amazing. And we have a pond, and we have no mosquitoes because those things, they gobble up every mosquito and we still haven't got mosquitoes because they wiped them out now we'll get them back toward the end of the summer but if you ever watch the swallow they're beautiful and they dart about it's like they never rest a curse will never rest on you if you obey god and skip the chamsa now for the avinu and our closing video avinu shabashamayim yit kadesh shimcha Vit Barech Malchutcha Ratsoncha Ihie Asui Bashamayim Uva Aretz Vititain Lachmenu Temidit Umechol Lanu Hatotenu Kasher Anachnu Mohalim Lachotim Lanu Veal Tevienu Lide Nisayon Veshamrenu Mikal Ra Amen Next week is Torah portion, Shoftim. Shoftim is all about judges and laws, and it's a good indication why Western society developed from Israel, Judaism, Torah, Tanakh, why we have the laws and systems that we have today. Our closing video is just one and a half minutes of Yonina and her husband singing the first verse of Jerusalem of Gold. I don't have any lyrics, Hebrew, English, on this. But if you go to our website on the videos page, you can see a Yerushalayim Shel Zahav with lyrics. Just enjoy this. One and a half minutes. I love the way they sing together. And until next week, from our backyard on Vashon Island, until next week in Torah portion Shof team, Kellen and I bid you Shalom. shalom. אביר הרים צלול קיים וריח אורני ניסה ברוח ארבעים עם כל פעמונים הובטר דמת אילן ואבן שוריה בחלומה העיר אשר בדד יושבת ובליבה